Yo, what is up guys? Hope you're all having a fantastic day. So 343 just revealed the next major update for Halo Infinite, which is known as CU32. And we're going to be breaking down everything this new update offers. Now, I do want to quickly mention that we actually just got two brand new Forge maps that are available right now in matchmaking. The first one being Corrosion, which currently has a 24-7 playlist going on for it right now. Now, the map itself isn't exactly the best, as it kind of looks unfinished. I think there's some detail that's lacking on this map. It almost looks like something out of Halo 5, and I don't mean to like disrespect Halo 5, because Halo 5 had a really good Forge for its time, but I think infinite's forge has surpassed it and yeah I, I do think they could have done a lot more with this map i will say though that i do like having those pools of acid on the map i always love interactive elements like that on map so if you walk on the acid pools you do slowly take damage over time and of course if you stay in too long you'll just die and i love seeing that kind of stuff so i will give them that i think that's pretty cool that being said this is an arena map and it does have vehicles which i'm not a huge fan of now i'm not a huge fan of the ghost in infinite because i think it's really overpowered and that's why i don't really like it because the ghost can be annoying especially because i think there's at least like two ghosts on the map or i don't know if more can spawn but i've had two ghosts on the map at the same time and the ghost is so easy to use in this game it has an extremely fast fire rate i think it even has a headshot multiplier so it's really just a nuisance and that's also why I don't like this map as much. However, I will say that the second map that they added, which unfortunately is only in ring, which is called Interference, I have been enjoying that map a lot. And the reason so is because this is actually a Halo 5 map. They recreated it. It's called the rig in Halo 5, and now it's called Interference in Infinite. And yeah, I think they recreated it pretty well. Now this map has gotten backlash because of how it looks, since it's mostly gray, which, you know, I think is a pretty fair take on it. I definitely do think there should have been more color on this map. Now let's get into the CU32 update on what it's going to offer. The first thing being the exchange shop, which is essentially just a free shop in Halo Infinite. Now the exchange shop is going to have a bunch of old items that people weren't able to get back then. So this means items from old events that people missed out on, like the Tenrai event, the, the first Yappening event, Cyber Showdown event, the Tactical Ops event, all those events that people missed out on that weren't able to get the stuff are going to be rotating into the exchange shop. So not only will old event items be in the exchange shop but we're also going to see promotional items so things like the oreo armor coating or the rockstar weapon coating or even the monster weapon coatings we're going to be seeing stuff like that other things we can expect in the exchange shop is old ultimate reward so if you missed out on ultimate rewards this is going to be the way you get them they're going to be adding in old ultimate rewards another thing they mentioned which i didn't expect is that they're going to be adding in twitch drops as well so a bunch of the twitch drops that have been released are going to be rotating into the exchange shop as well so things like the freaking what is it called gladiator or those diamond weapon coatings like stuff like that is going to be arriving into the exchange shop which i think is going to be awesome as well another thing we can also expect in the exchange shop is completely brand new items or things that were vaulted that they never got to release and they actually give us a few examples they show us like this new armor coating and also the needler attachment like that helmet attachment that has a big giant needle that does cat dirty is going to be in the exchange so we can expect to see some items like that although i think most of the items will be just older stuff that people missed out on but there's still going to be some new stuff in there as well now the exchange shop is going to rotate items every month so it's not going to be like the premium shop where it, it rotates every week or the exchange is going to be rotating every month although just like the shop even though stuff rotates out you're going to be able to buy stuff just by looking through the customization menus so there's going to be like no fomo or anything because say you miss one of the exchange items that you wanted to unlock and it like rotated out for something else well you could just look for it in the customization menu so there's going to be no fomo or anything like that you're going to be able to just purchase it whenever you want so i mean yeah overall the exchange shop is looking to be pretty good can't really say anything negative about it because it has about everything that i wanted you're able to get items that you missed and we're also going to be getting new stuff as well it's not just going to be old items i do think it is a bit unfortunate that we're not going to be able to use those spartan points for actual premium cosmetics from like the actual shop but at the same time you know i didn't expect that because they never mentioned that they would do that although you know a lot of games do something like that so i think it would be fair to have that option to actually buy actual premium stuff 
even if it is a bit more grindy so i do hope they kind of look into that but i'll be honest i'm pretty satisfied with what we have right now now you may be asking how exactly do you get these new spartan points and there's actually three methods on how you can get spartan points the first one being the daily challenge which is just going to be a challenge that appears every day and by completing that challenge you get 250 spartan points the second method is through the ultimate reward system so by completing all the challenges and then doing the ultimate reward you actually get a thousand spartan points so I think that means we're no longer gonna have like an actual cosmetic that you unlock instead It's just gonna be Spartan points from now on is what it seems like and at first glance that kind of does seem like a bad thing But I think they're the reason they're doing that is because all the new ultimate rewards that they had planned for like the future Are probably just gonna be thrown into the exchange shop for like the new items So it does give you like a bit more flexibility there whether you want to unlock the new ultimate reward Or if you just want to get like other stuff you missed it all depends on how fast and how much or how many Spartan points you get it really all depends on that so the third method for getting spartan points is by completing the operation path so whatever operation is up is going to have spartan points for example the new operation that we're going to be getting with this new update is called banished honor and most of the tiers are spartan points so yeah i think every operation is just going to be like this from now on it's going to have like some rewards in there and the rest of it is just going to be spartan points I'm not sure how I feel about this. I think overall it is a slight upgrade because to be honest, half of the stuff was usually just like filler stuff like emblems and stuff. And so now instead of just getting that emblem that you don't want you're gonna get points that you can use for something that you do want from the exchange. So this just goes back to what I said earlier. It all depends on like the rate of how many spartan points you get because if it's extremely grindy to get spartan points then I can kind of see it being a problem. But if it's not as grindy and I think and it's like a fair amount of time that you get these Spartan points, then yeah, I mean, it just gives you more flexibility to choose what you want to get. Instead of just getting that emblem you don't want, you could use it for something else. So it could be good, but yeah, like I said, it just depends on the rate of how many Spartan points you get uh, by playing and stuff like that. So that pretty much wraps up the exchange stuff and the Spartan points and whatnot. We are also getting, of course, a new operation, which we just talked about, which is Banished Honor. And yeah, it's mostly just Spartan points. The rewards in this pass is of course Banish themed. And I gotta say all the armor pieces look good. So there's about like sev seven actual rewards in this pass that you get. Five of them being armor pieces. One of them is a visor and the other one is an emblem. So it seems like operations are gonna be like this from here on out. It's gonna have like some rewards and then the rest is just gonna be Spartan points. Anyways, moving on to the next thing, we got some forge updates. The biggest thing being the alien palette and flood palette are finally coming to forge. They teased us back in the CU29 live stream and so now it's finally made its way so we got the alien palette which has a bunch of like flora and stuff alien flora and of course the flood palette which has a bunch of flood objects and they actually you know showcase us all this and yeah i mean that's all cool stuff for like forgers and stuff um we'll see if it actually gets used on to the next thing it seems like we're getting another sandbox overhaul they're gonna be tuning a bunch of weapons the first weapon being the gravity hammer is getting tuned yet yet again this time it's getting a slight range nerf and the next weapon that got tuned is the sniper rifle which isn't much of a big change but they basically just sped up the ready up time when you pick up the sniper rifle so whenever you pick up the sniper rifle the animation where like you pick it up is gonna be a lot quicker so that way you can like shoot faster i guess and the next weapon they changed is the cinder shot which i actually really do like this change because this weapon is probably one of the most annoying weapons in halo infinite and that's because every time you would shoot someone with the cinder shot it just pulls them in and there's just like no escaping the cinder shot so yeah they completely remove that gravity effect that pulls you in whenever you get shot at by the cinder shot so it's no longer going to have that gravity effect that like black hole effect that pulls you in and they also slightly nerfed the fire rate so yeah i think that's a pretty good change for that gun because that gun is really freaking annoying another change they made is through the spike grenade so the spike grenade is no longer going to detonate in mid-air because beforehand if you threw it up into the air or just like you know the air time there's a chance where it would just explode because the detonation timer already starts once you throw it so now it just doesn't detonate when it's in mid-air the detonation timer only starts when it hits a surface whether that's a wall or a player and it also has a shorter detonation time the next weapon they changed is a sidekick they're actually nerfing it a bit although it's just a slight nerf it seems like and that is that they're slightly reducing the rate of fire and the next weapon is the plasma pistol which I mean this is even crazy to say but now it finally has the EMP effect so the plasma pistol works like the way it, it should have worked since forever ago <laughs> 
I don't know why they ever removed this effect from the plasma pistol in the first place, so now it's finally back in its rightful spot. It can now EMP vehicles, which is really good. So the next thing they changed is something for King of the Hill Firefight. It's nothing too crazy, but just a quality of life thing. They basically just added like assist points. So now you can get like wheelman assist or just points for like getting assist kills and whatnot. Because for whatever reason, that wasn't a thing. So that's really cool. Another thing is Extraction is now getting a multi-site extraction custom game option. It's unfortunate it's not actually changing the actual game type, but you can actually modify it now where you can have more than one extraction site. Personally, I think they should add this into social playlist where it's more than just one extraction site. I think that'd be cool, but unfortunately it's only a custom game option right now. But I think they should have made a, a version for it and add it to matchmaking. I think that would have been cool. So another change they made is for ranked, and that is the fact that there's now a auto ending on unfair teams so if you get into like a 3v4 or like you know vice versa whatever the game is going to end when the teams are unfair which is definitely good because i've gotten a bunch of quitters before that just quit when we start losing or something like that or something bad happens people just rage quit and yeah it just makes it annoying because sometimes players don't even leave even if they lose a player or two or even if you want to leave i think you get docked points for leaving so i think this is definitely a good change for rank another thing they change is that you can now change the amount of score on set teams which let's be honest this is only for like this is literally only for hcs let's be honest this is like only for hcs maybe i'm wrong but at least that's what it seems like i just think it's kind of funny how they try to make it sound like it's something that people do like i remember uni Shuck saying that oh now i can 1v1 someone and if i want to get like handicap or something i can have zero kills and the other person can have five kills or something he said something like that it was, it was really funny but let's be honest come on they just made this change just literally for the hcs tournaments i never see anyone doing that i just found it really fun anyways let's move on to the next thing we actually got some def cam improvements that are coming i mean they basically just make it like the classic cam that it was in like halo 3 and halo 2 and whatnot and yeah they basically just essentially made it like that is what they're saying which is definitely a good change i mean it's something they should have never changed in the first place um and so yeah they're just improving that now so another thing they changed is the bandit evo is now in the firing range now what's really funny about this is the way they place it in the firing range they literally just lay it on the floor instead of putting it in like that cool container where you grab the weapon from they just literally throw it on the floor which i think is kind of funny i think they should have just had two containers and then you have the regular bandit and then the evo for whatever reason they just, they just threw it on the floor i don't know i just find that funny but yeah now you're gonna be able to use the bandit evo in the firing range another change they made is that deadlock no longer has scorpions it only has wraiths now and i think that's unfortunate i mean i guess it makes sense a lot of people were saying that scorpion was just way too overpowering and not only that it's because you could also get like multiple scorpions which i've seen happen on deadlock i think i've gotten like three scorpions on that map before and like my entire team had those scorpions and we were absolutely just rolling the other team which you know i think is fair i just think it sucks because the scorpion is like one of those really iconic vehicles i'd say now that's just another way to not be able to experience the scorpion because to be honest i think it's more of a map problem or even then i think they could have done something better like make it so there's only one scorpion on the map at a time or something else i think would have been better instead of just completely removing it so something else they brought up is that there's going to be a btb heavies refresh the week after the cu 32 update now this is going to be the same maps that we have in the regular btb playlist it's going to be those same community forge map they're just going to have like the heavies variant for those maps so that should be fun i mean i do enjoy heavies and now we're going to be able to experience it on those btb community maps now something that's really cool is that they also mentioned that later in may we're going to get a new combat workshop experience and when they do a combat workshop, that means they're going to be testing out something completely new. And this time around, it's something really unique. And that is something that is made by the Forge Falcons, which is a team of forgers that create like these really unique experiences. And the experience that they're going to be bringing to matchmaking is the Survive the Undead experience, which is basically just COD zombies, except like Halo edition is the best way to describe it if you played call of duty zombies and you should pretty much get the idea of what it is and yeah they're going to be bringing that to matchmaking it's going to be two maps that they bring to matchmaking which is going to be night of the undead and installation of the dead and yeah you could play this right now in customs if you wanted to i'm not sure how that's going to work out honestly i'm really intrigued but yeah this is the kind of stuff i want to see uh, more unique experiences like this i hope this one really works out well because that probably means we're going to see more unique experience just like this added to matchmaking if this all goes well 
So I'm definitely looking forward to that, that's going to be fun. That's going to be later in May. The last thing they mention is that the match composer is still being worked on and that it's coming in the distant future, so it's not going to be arriving with the CU32 update. I'm guessing it's going to arrive with the next major update whenever that is. But yeah, that about wraps up everything you can expect in the CU32 update. Hopefully I did a good job of trying to break it down for you guys. Let me know if you have any questions down below. And of course, let me know what you guys think about this update overall. Do you think it's a good update or just really a bunch of nothing? Personally, I think it's, I mean, it is a net positive overall. I mean, it's just a lot of quality of life improvement. I mean, is it anything crazy? Not really. Though, with that being said, consider subscribing and liking the video as it shows your support. And if you want to see more Halo content like this, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.